Live from the Bob Levy Broadcast Center, overlooking the Tom's River, it's time to get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Be a part of the show, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, March 1st, 39 degrees, getting up to 48. WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 News Talk Radio, streaming live on WOBMAM.com and on the Radio Pup app. Feel free to join the conversation, 732-505-1160. Our next conversation is with Pat Thomas. He is the principal of Tom's River High School East, the leader currently in the mascot challenge here in Ocean mm-hmm. County, uh, sp- sponsored by WOBM. Uh, you uh, That says to me, Pat, by the way, right. if you don't know, or if, you, if the listeners don't know, basically this is where uh, I, I think this is like a school spirit meter, right? This is where like parents and kids go online, vote early and often. Right. 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 And uh, and basically the, the the to me, the most engaged schools are the ones that win these things. Yeah, they do. I mean, uh, and it is. And it, it's not always purely reflective of the school. However, it is a it is a positive reflection of the climate. And right now we are winning. So I guess that says that we're one of the better schools out there. Right. right so, well, I, it's good to see that you've uh, you've you've uh, embraced this like this. Uh-huh. So let me ask you a question, because. You know, when we did our uh, our uh, um, Halloween flow challenge and Tom's River High School North ended up uh, dominating that competition. Right. It was very I, I was you know able to watch the voting results real time. Uh, and it was amazing. It seemed that every day, like right after second period, uh, it was like the results would spike. <laughs> so the question is, like, at, 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 and I mean, you know, I'm trying to get behind the curtain here. Right. All right, Pat. And, you know, I'm I'm expecting that you're an educator, that you're a role model, <laughs> you know, that you're going to do the right thing here. So I'm asking, is there like an edict that says, you know, there's an announcement that comes over the loudspeaker in homeroom and says, kids, you know, ladies, and gentlemen, and <laughs> can you do me a favor and please take out your smartphone, go to WOBMFM.com, and please place your vote now for Tom's River High School East Mountain. And does that happen? Yeah, of course that happens. Okay. <laughs> all right. Good job. That's all I wanted to know. It's all about winning, Jeremy. That's all I wanted to know. Okay. Good. Now we can move along. I'm feeling good. I feel like we've already built a good relationship. So, Pat, tell me about Tom's River High School East, uh, my alma mater. Oh well, it's uh, you know arguably I I feel obviously it's the best school in in, in Tom's River. Uh, it's the home of the Raiders. It's it's been in existence since 1979. Uh, currently, our school population is it's down. I think Jeremy, when you were there, we were probably somewhere up in the around 2,000 yeah. mark, and we're about 1,400 students right now. Um, very strong athletic uh, institution. Uh, very strong uh, academics. Uh, we offer a variety of different types of clubs and organizations to provide a. Uh, diver- diversification of, of, of activities to uh, uh, better prepare the students for their future endeavors. So it's a, it's a great school to be at, great staff. Uh, the students are very supportive. The parents are very supportive. And uh, I, I, I'm very fortunate to be a principal at this school. Right. And you've been the principal there, there for a it's short a, time. That's my second year. I replaced uh, <laughs> Mrs. Ann Baldy. She, she was a phenomenal building principal. She was my mentor. She retired a, a year and a half ago, and I took over from her. Uh, so I've been a principal at East for two years. Uh, I was an assistant principal prior to that for about five. Um, and I taught uh, at uh, High School East since 1998, and I taught earth science and environmental science. Uh, I was also uh, a coach. I coached soccer, and I heard that you were really? big in soccer. I was a soccer uh, coach at high school with the girls. I, I even played at my college at Delaware. Um, I also coached boys indoor and outdoor track, um, which was great. I loved that experience. Um, but before, prior to that, you and I were talking about, uh, before I got into education, I, um, I'm a geologist. I worked in the environmental consulting business for about 10 years before I got into education. And I worked for oil companies, chemical companies, uh, different various organizations within the government, uh, traveling all over the country, uh, you know, basically characterizing the nature and extent of contamination on, on different sites across the country and figuring out ways to, to clean it up based on, you know, whatever the laws were and whatever state I happened to work in. Uh, it was a great career. I loved it. I loved working there, traveling, and uh, it was a great company. Um, Roy F. Weston, Weston Solutions, as they're called now, but one of the best in the in the world at the time, and I really enjoyed it. But uh, I went and became a teacher. I decided to to move into education. So, so what 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 
triggered that move. I mean, that you know, and I, trigger sounds like there was some kind of uh, yeah. horrible life event that said, "Oh my God, I have to be a teacher now." <laughs> Uh, what, what, I mean, what, that's a pretty drastic life change, no? Yeah, it is. And, uh, but you know what, I, it, it was, I was growing up in, uh, that environment where, uh, you, you know, you were working, trying to, the, the, the move up the corporate ladder, save for early for retirement. Uh, and my whole life was, was built around that philosophy. And, uh, you know, at some point in time, I just started thinking about, you know, what's important in life and, and really where do I see myself and what, what can I do? Where, where am I best suited? And I, although I love that field and I, I thought I did very well. Um, I, you know, as corny as it may sound, I really thought, felt I could make a difference in the life of a child, and uh, I felt my skill sets would be better applied in that industry. So I went back and got a, a degree uh, as I was working in education, and uh, I was fortunate to have a student taught at uh, High School East uh, back in 97, 98 with Mr. Tierney. He's since retired. He's a great teacher, phenomenal teacher. He's been my mentor uh, and um, had such a great experience that I decided to make that change, and I've been fortunate ever since. I loved it. So you never had that moment where you were teaching early on that you were like, God, I wish I was back with rocks. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, you know, I, no matter what, I'm always looking at rocks and dirt and stuff like right. that. So, but uh, you know, I never got rid of that passion, you know, because I, I taught her science and I even worked in the, in the summer for some great companies uh, when I was teaching JMC Environmental and PMK, and they were great companies and. Uh, so I always kept that that connection to the environment, but uh, no, it's the kids, it's the experience, right. it's it's hanging around them and being part of their lives, and um, just that's what gets me up in the morning every day. Right. So that's what I love about it. I, c- I could see it now, by the way. It's a it's a it's a it's a big clash between East and uh, and North, right? And uh, there it is, Coach Pat on the <laughs> sidelines coaching his girls' soccer team. And one of the girls yells, "Coach Pat, what are you doing? I'm just looking at this. Uh, I'm just, I'm just trying. This is an amazing rock formation down here. I yeah. just want to take a look at. That. Always looking. You got to do that. You know what I mean? You got to educate the kids, even on the athletic field, Jeremy. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. You know, you brought up a good point though, because uh, you know, 1,400 kids. Uh, just to put it in perspective, I'm pretty sure when I was at East. Uh, and and I was class of ninety one, although I didn't graduate from East, but that's a whole different story. Um, <laughs> we won't hold that again. Yeah, you. that's okay. I was there for two years, and then went to uh, uh, I don't know Monmouth Academy or something like that. But I. Uh, uh, when I was there, I think there were something like 2,100 or 2,200 right. kids in the school. Right. Now we're at 1,400, and right. it's funny because the the population shift, right. as really at the time, East was the biggest school, North was uh, was second, uh, and South has always been the smaller of the three schools. But right. now we've had a total shift of uh, of kind of population. Right. North is – you know, growing, yeah. has, has expanded and is growing, and East is kind of has, is a little more mature area. Let's right. put it that way. Right. So, um, cool. So. We were also impacted, you know, with the with the hurricane. We did lose, you know, maybe a hundred or so students through uh, transferring to other, you know, areas as right. resulting from the storm. So that was that was a big part of it. We, we've been hovering around that fifteen hundred to seventeen hundred range for a little while, but right. now we're down to fourteen thirty. And then you also had at some point you had the Seaside Park kids yeah. who now are, uh, I think that's they're Central. gone. Yeah, yeah, they're at Central. Uh, who, by the way, uh, whose butt you're kicking in the uh, mascot <laughs> challenge? I mean, not that there's, I'm not that I'm. You know, uh, challenging uh, Tommy Palapanitas uh-huh. and his team in Central. I mean, that would be wrong. I wouldn't want to go ahead and do that. Uh, so, so talk to me. We were talking about. Uh, well, okay. So we uh, we are coming up against the break. When we come back, uh, I want to talk to you um, a little bit about innovation at Tom's River East. We were talking about uh, STEM. We were talking about uh, some of the new. Uh, new things that are happening around the building. Uh, and I know you have some good insight into some things that you're doing. I also know that you guys participated in one of the, uh, I think you did well at the robotics challenge that right. just happened. So right. a lot of good stuff happening at East. We're here with Pat Thomas, uh, principal Tom's River High School East. We will be back right after this. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin wherever you go. Download the Radio Pop app for your smartphone or tablet. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin continues. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160, 1310, and WOBMAM.com. Welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 News Talk Radio, streaming at WOBMAM.com and on the Radio Pup app. We are here at Pat Thomas, principal, Tom's River High School East. And we're talking about all the great things happening at Tom's River High School East. So we were talking a little bit about innovation. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, you know we've we've talked previously uh, with uh, you know uh, with uh, uh, Principal Keller from uh, High School North and with uh, Dave Healy, Superintendent. We've talked about freshman academies. Mm-hmm. We've talked about the fact that uh, you know we're kind of grouping freshmen now. 
uh, in an effort to uh, to to uh, you know to allow them to build relationships, to keep more kids in school, to keep the dropout rates down, and to have them feel comfortable as they integrate into a new environment. Uh, we're really talking now next level uh, at, at high school. So we're talking about academies. So I know that uh, you were mentioning to me in the break that East is really kind of on the forefront from a STEM perspective. So can you talk to me a little about that? What's happening in the school right now? Well, right now, the 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 there's the, the plan for the district is to move the three high schools into academies uh, and career academies. And uh, High School East is being looked at as a STEM academy. It's science, technology, engineering, math. Uh, they're looking at moving... Um, High School North into a business academy and South into a fine arts. And uh, the, the objective is to, to try to better align uh, students towards careers as they're going through the process from uh, high school into those, those particular fields and provide more support uh, if through curriculum and skill set knowledge and things like that so they're better prepared to meet those challenges. And, um, you know, STEM is a big thing because uh, that's always it's the career of the future in many ways because, you um, you know, science, technology uh, drives industry. And so uh, High School East is going to be moving in that direction. And the Tom's River Regional School Syst- uh, District is is in the process of, of, of trying to develop this whole system. They're not, we're in the introductory phase of this right now. So High School East is going to be the STEM. Cool. And so I know that you, you guys had, for example, a robotics team that started competing. So how did we do? Uh, we did. We're doing very well. It's the, we're we're actually called uh, the, the, the short circuits. If you had seen the 1980s movie, yes, yeah, I love that movie. So they they, they named it the short circuits, and they're doing very well. They've they're, they've generated a, a huge following with the students uh, that have interest in the science and the math and the engineering. And uh, Mrs. Signorelli, Mr. Patalunas, and Mrs. Applegate have been working hard and volunteering their own time to. Uh, to, to get uh, provide opportunities for these students to come in to develop these robotics and things like that. And they, they've taken them to competitions, and they're doing very well. So we're excited about the, the growth and, 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 that, and the application of our uh, knowledge cool. in that way. So, and you were also, we were talking a little bit also about the, uh, there's a, a challenge, uh, kind of a, a micro grant that each school is being given an opportunity to get that's uh, actually from our foundation. Uh, and, and so we were offering up to $10,000 per school for an innovation project, uh, right. you know, that, that, that the principals will submit to us. And so, uh, you know, so it, just to do the math, there's 18 schools. So that means it could be up to $180,000 worth of, of grants that we're giving out, which is, uh, you know, crazy. But anyway, uh, that's a whole separate Thank you story. for that, by the way, too. Uh, so, <laughs> so how are you guys addressing that at East? Well, we, what we've done is we presented the idea to the staff and – uh, in line with the school mission and the district vision, uh, we've provided opportunities for, for staff members to come up with ideas that we would support, um, you know, college and career readiness and, and to move the East forward. And right now we have, we have three uh, competing different uh, grants from three separate groups of teachers, uh, one being the robotics. Obviously, they're, they're competing to uh, provide uh, uh, information and, and technology to, to to support that initiative. Also, we're looking at uh, the, one of our teachers is looking to develop a meteorology class, cool. and he's going to want to bring in a weather type station to an, download, analyze data. And another uh, group is looking to do something in terms of uh, career uh, or character education, to bring in a ropes course and things like that. So, what we're going to do is get all three groups together, present it to our committees, and our committees that will then decide what we think is best for. So, our I, w- I will tell you that's exactly what we were hoping for: is to engage uh, teachers, to engage the whole kind of uh, the whole staff to kind of come together and and build that creativity uh, to put together a program that the school wanted to drive. I think that's. Uh, you know, we have teachers that have been a little bit uh, disenchanted with, you know, some of the Common Core Park uh, pressures. Right. And this was an opportunity to kind of help put some power back to the people. Right. If you know what <laughs> I mean. So, all right, great. Uh, Pat Thomas, pr- principal, Tom's River High School East. We're going to talk about how he's going to use his magic wand when we get back. <laughs> Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Coming up next, the latest from WOBM News, the Town Square, New Jersey News Network, and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore, wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. 
Welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. March 1st, 39 degrees, 735. WOBMAM 1160, 1310 News Talk Radio. Streaming live at WOBMAM.com and on the Radio Pup app, 732-505-1160. If you want to join the conversation, we are here with Pat Thomas, Principal Toms River High School East. So, Pat, uh, talk to me about the mission, vision of Toms River High School East and kind of the committees that support that mission and vision. Right. Thank you. Uh, well, our goal, you know, our goal at High School East is, well, my per, my personal goal is to make High School East the best possible school that we can. And in order for that to happen, uh, it, the school has to have a vision and a mission, uh, which we did. We created a, a together in, involving all the stakeholders involved in this process, the students, the parents, the, the staff members, and even the community members in terms of developing this vision, which is that every student's going to achieve personal success and will be, go on to become responsible and productive citizens, which is our vision. Now, our mission is uh, working together with everyone to make sure that we're all on the same page uh, and we're all aligned in the same direction is to uh, work with the school community to uh, promote uh, a safe educational environment where students are stimulated to become lifelong learners, uh, where they're equipped with the knowledge and the analytical, the communication and the interpersonal skills to meet the demands of college and or careers as informed citizens in a globally competitive market. So having a, a, a vision and a mission in which we are all aligned to is our first step. So in order to accomplish that at High School East uh, in the process is understanding the variables that contribute to that, that vision and mission, and that is understanding that uh, the four variables that contribute to the success, and that's the, uh, to produce a well-educated and highly ethical graduate. It's the student's knowledge and cognitive abilities, understanding uh, the dynamics of the, the values of the home, uh, what the, does a school do to achieve that particular those particular goals? And ov- obviously, what is the the mindset of the community? How can the community support that? So, understanding those four variables, High School East has put together eight separate committees, uh, which are, are made up of uh, volunteer teachers, uh, parents, and we're trying to get the community members involved as well as well as students. And we have a um, attendance committee, a behavior committee, uh, we have a safety committee, we have a college and career vision committee. Uh, we have a, a community outreach, um, we have a skip committee, and we have a climate and, and a curriculum. And all those co- those different committees have different objectives. And what we do is we meet on a monthly basis and we sit down and we assess where are we and how can we move forward. So in terms of, in terms of things like, uh, you know, have, giving every student a, every student, our, our goal of ours is to make sure they have a vision of where they want to go when they leave us uh, and provide them with the skill sets to do that. So one committee, for example, I'll just use the, the College and Career Connection. The College and Career Connection Committee is, is dedicated to trying to show students how an interest can uh, can lead into a degree and or a career. Uh, so we do many different types of things, and uh, we've started something called Raiders on the Rise, where we bring back former uh, Raiders. Jeremy, you could be one as your former oh, Raider. All right. uh, can come back, and they give talks about how the high school experiences and things like that have helped mold them into the person that they become today. Uh, and we've been bringing back different types of guests, and we do that on a monthly basis. We just had Frankie Edgar over there uh, last week, and he did a great job, of course. Um, we have Danny Clinch coming in, uh, I believe, in March. Uh, he was just featured on 60 Minutes. Yep. Uh, so we have things like that. We have um, kind of a unique thing. The teachers get together, and they do these things called college talks, where instead of bringing a representative from a particular college, the teachers that went to those particular colleges come in, and they talk about their experiences, life on campus, what it was like to be a student there, you know, uh, what was the majors like and things like that. So the students get a personal perspective of it. And, uh, you know, that's going very well. I, speaking from a parent perspective, my daughter actually was a sophomore there. She attended one on Monmouth the other day. She didn't want to go to any, she doesn't want to go to any Jersey school. Of it's course. Not, yeah, of course. Right. Why would you do that? Uh, but she didn't, but she went to the Monmouth one and, and we spent the weekend afterwards sitting down and trying to figure out, you know, our college and career path at this point. So, you know, the students are getting some benefit out of it. And we're also, uh, Mrs. Weinberger uh, is working on bringing in all kinds of different industries into the school, and they, they are actually showing students what kind of things you can do with different types of degrees or different types of interest, either through a degree or just uh, through a trade, and things are going very well. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, you know, I think that, you know, you, you bring up some great points around, uh, you know, there's that old, there's that old, uh, there's that old belief that when you graduate from high school, uh, you know, I, I think of the Simon and Garfunkel song, Kodachrome, right, right? which is uh, when I graduate from high school, what do I really have right. as far as getting ready for the real world? And, you know, it used to be that you went to college and uh, you were then basically guaranteed a job when you get out of college and away you went. That was the path. Otherwise, if you you know graduate high school and you didn't have anything, then right. maybe you learned a trade or something. But 
the reality is now that this world has changed and kids need to start thinking about what they want to do a lot younger. Right. Right. Need to have a plan. And that plan doesn't have to always include college. It doesn't have to always, you know, it doesn't inc- include necessarily, you know, a specific, uh, you know, a, a specific educational path. It may involve a certification process. It may involve right. just thinking differently about what they want to do. And I think Anything that we could do to kind of teach kids to think that way at an earlier age right. um, is fa- – I'll tell you what, and this is totally off topic, but my son, as a freshman at South, he took a class called Career Exploration. Right. And I will tell you, that class is n- – not necessarily for freshmen because he had juniors and seniors in that class – I think every kid should have to take that class as a freshman. I agree. Because it makes you start thinking about what you want to do with the rest of your life as a freshman right. as opposed to as a senior when it's already too late. Right. Right. But I, So I think that's great what you're doing there, and it's clear that you have a, a, an obvious uh, uh, you know, um, uh, vision for how you want these kids to progress, and I think that's super refreshing in, in, in our, uh, in our uh, um, constantly um, – more and more, I want to say, automated high school system, right? Right, where we seem to be teaching robotic, uh, right. and not in a good way, right? Uh, more than we teach dynamic thinking. So that's awesome. All right, so we only have two minutes left. So you got the magic wand, you got the fairy dust, you got the pixie dust. You shake your nose, you make something happen. What are you going to impact? What are you going to change? Well, what we're, we're going to change? We're going to change the overall results of of you know the measurable outcomes that you and I were talking about because uh, that's one of our goals. And but more importantly, what we want to try and do is, is like you were saying, is we want to create these lifelong learners because any student that goes through the educational process, um, you know, they can change their mind as to what they want to do as far as a career goes. So we want to provide a foundation for them, which are those skill sets. You know, I believe that every student should be able to communi- you know, should be able to read and and, and write uh, and speak. Uh, uh, and they should be able to think critically uh, and be a problem solver. And they also should have uh, these interpersonal skill sets to be successful. So if you're asking me things that I would change, I would really focus on those types of things to move us forward so they have the skill sets to do whatever they want. Right. Uh, and then another thing uh, for the district is, uh, you know, like we were talking about, is aligning the entire community to this common vision and, and, and right. mission. And that's the trick as an educator. And I think if we do that and we all pull together as a, as a community, we're going to be producing these, these graduates that are, that are more better prepared for their future endeavors. And that's, that's a goal of mine. Right. And as we talked about, uh, great, you know, raising educational standards really starts at home. Right. Right. It's parents and, uh, you know, it's parents who, who don't accept a C, you know, as, as passing. Right. Right. I mean, that's where it starts. And I think, you know, that we, we all kind of, uh, we've all kind of fallen into the handle our kids with kid gloves thing, right? right? Where we, we want to praise little Johnny just for trying. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're a results-driven community uh, and a results-driven culture. And uh, and as parents, we have a responsibility to make sure that our kids are, are doing their job, which is to excel at school. Right. Um, Pat, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, you know, it was great talking to you. It's like I said, it's clear. Uh, I feel super confident that with you at the helm, Tom's River High School East is heading in the right direction. You know, thank you. except when you guys come up against South, obviously. <laughs> but uh, good luck in the mascot challenge. And I'm sure we will be talking in the not too distant future. Great. Thank you, Jeremy. All right. We'll be right back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin.